Rebounded by Matos. Dayton with numbers. Ibby, open, three, good. Down low, smaller man on him. Backing him down, backing him down. Turns, fades away, it's good. Bounce pass, Watson, Ibby, double clutched it. No, Obi, follow up jam. Hey everyone, welcome back, it's Cole. Today we're going to talk about Dayton basketball and how good they have been this year. And I honestly am still in shock by how good they've looked despite their two losses, and I have as much confidence as them as I do any other of the top teams in the country. And this year has been so up and down so far with college basketball that I think UD could seriously go on a run in March when it gets here. So make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel and follow me on Twitter for even more updates going on in the sports world. And let's get into this. So if you don't know already, I am born and raised in Dayton, and UD basketball is what we are about here, and Bill's Donuts. And there is a reason the first four is at UD every single year, and the NCAA tournament begins in Dayton, and we care about our basketball here, and it's something everyone takes very seriously. We are surrounded by some great schools as well. Cincinnati and Xavier down south, Ohio State is north, and Dayton is right here in the middle. Dayton basketball fans are the best. They travel all over the place, and it's honestly kind of crazy because it could be an NCAA tournament, or it could be in Hawaii, and the fans are going to be there. I was actually at the first four back in 2015 when Dayton was a part of it, and they were the last four in, and had to play Boise State on their home court in the NCAA tournament, and Boise State honestly played so well during the game considering the circumstances, and that was one of the best atmospheres I honestly will ever experience. And the new renovations at UD Arena were just completed, and this very well could be the best season ever with Dayton basketball. Dayton actually made the Final Four in 1967 along with North Carolina, Houston, and UCLA, and made it to the title game but lost to UCLA, so it's going to be hard to top that season, but you never know, so that's why I wanted to talk about UD. Anthony Grant is currently in his third season as head coach at UD, and when Archie left, we were all devastated, but you know, it was expected. Archie arrived in 2012, and obviously his brother's Arizona head coach Sean Miller, and Archie was fun, and his third year was the magical year that Dayton made it to the Elite Eight, and the city was on fire. I remember the parting that was happening down on campus, and the team really connected to the city. I will never forget where I was when they beat Ohio State, because I was in school, and it was the last class of the day, and when V Sanford hit the shot, and Aaron Kraft was laying on the court, the entire school went crazy, because we beat our big brother and it was just so fulfilling. And then they beat Syracuse, and no one really had expectations of them winning that game. And then they were blessed to play Stanford rather than Kansas, and before they played Florida and Memphis, you could make the argument for them winning, but sadly, the run ended there in the Elite Eight. But that year is what put Dayton basketball on the map and demanded respect for them. Even the next year they went on another run, and it started out at the game versus Boise State that I was at, and then they beat Providence and lost a close game to Oklahoma. But Dayton became a team everyone had to look out for in the NCAA tournament. Then in 2016, they were blown out in their first game versus Syracuse, but they made the Final Four. In 2017, which was Archie's last year, they lost to Wichita State, which hurt a lot, but they were a really good team. The Archie Miller era had some outstanding players that deserve to be recognized. Devin Oliver, Deshaun Pierre, Jordan Seibert, Scoochie Smith, V. Sanford, Charles Koch, Kendall Pollard, Kyle Davis, Darrell Davis, and Ryan Mikesell and Trey Landers, who are on this year's roster, are doing so well, and I would never forget Steve McElwain, who passed away in May of 2016. But Archie had to eventually leave because he had so many great offers on the table, and when Indiana came calling, he finally had to go. And then Dayton hired Anthony Grant, which I didn't know what to expect because I was so in love with Archie, but Coach Grant is quiet and gets stuff done in silence, and has honestly really worked out. And he went to UD and played for them from 1983 through 1987, and him coming back to coach's alma mater made sense, even though I really wanted Ron Hunter, but it's okay. Coach Grant was the head coach at VCU from 2006 to 2009, and then he went to become the head coach at Alabama. He did have success with Jeff Capel's roster at VCU, and things never really took off at Alabama. So there were questions to what Coach Grant exactly was at an elite level in terms of winning in March, but he was an assistant coach with the Thunder from 2015 through 2017, and thankfully he took the Dayton job after. Now Coach Grant has been here for three years, and his first two years at Dayton, he went 14 and 17, and then 21 and 12, but they made the NIT. And before this year, I thought they had a chance to make the NCAA tournament, but the development of this year's roster and the transfers they added has been the perfect mix. So let's talk about some of the guys on this year's roster. Obi Toppin is the big name everyone knows, and God, he has developed so much. To win in March, you need an NBA level player, and Obi might not just be a first round pick, but he could be a top five, or maybe even next year the number one overall pick. He does it all for them, but yet he doesn't have to because of the guys who start with him. Rodney Chapman is a scrappy guard who will defend every team's best player and can shoot. Jalen Crutcher has gotten so much better over his time at Dayton and is another go-to shooter. Trey Landers is an original Archie Miller player and he's another shooter they have and is a senior and can help with some size. And Ryan Mike Sell is the perfect Dayton player. The man is named after Mike Sell Chips, which is probably one of the most iconic things about Dayton, and he is to stretch for, and honestly, he's a really good player who deserves more credit. And even coming off the bench, E.B. Watson is an elite level player who transferred from Michigan, and he's one of the best six men in the country. Dayton is honestly really legit, you guys, and they have what you need to win in March. 
three-point shooting, an elite player, and four outstanding guards. Their offensive numbers on Kempom are really good. They're the number five team in adjusted offensive efficiency, number one in effective field goal percentage, number 16 at three-point percentage, and number one at two-point percentage. Now their defense ranks number 55 on Kempom at adjusted efficiency, which is not great. And then they were ranked 251 at defending the three, which is pretty bad. But I do think offense this year is going to go a long way rather than the past. And these guys have proved every single game how legit they are. Their two losses were in overtime. They even made some big shots to get there so they can play in hectic moments and show up. Something I value is experience and honestly a solid lineup with two guys that can come off the bench and contribute because the starting five being a close unit goes a long way and that's what Virginia had last year. And I think Dayton can actually replicate that. Crutcher, Chapman, and Landers can all shoot and Mike Sell is a solid stretch big. Toppin is the best player and an NBA level player. The only thing I worry about is if Toppin or Mike Sell get in foul trouble, but it hasn't really been a problem so far this year in the big games, and I keep calling them a better version of Baylor, but they just haven't played the level of competition as a top 10 team, but honestly that's fine because I want to see them keep flying under the radar anyway. They got the Maui bump according to my friend Mark Titus, and Dayton played elite there, and they were so close to beating Kansas. And even though they lost to Colorado, that's another good team, so I'm not concerned at all with their two losses. And honestly, let them lose a couple close games now, so the luck goes their way in March. They won't play a lot of great teams in A-10 play, and they might even slip up. This team gives me Butler 2010 vibes. They have an NBA level player, really smart guards, and are not a high major team, and they can fly under the radar. So that's all I have for you guys about Dayton basketball. This is my team, and I just can't believe how much potential they have this year. And honestly, it's now or never for them. This year is so wide open, it's crazy, and I really just hope they can make the second weekend in March, or even make a Final Four. So click here for a video about Memphis basketball, and how I said they were going to be a dangerous team once James Wiseman gets back. Then he left the second I was ready to upload it. You will get a good laugh at that, and I still think they're a good team without James, and can still make a Final Four. And click next to that for another video about Virginia basketball, and how they rebounded from their loss to UMBC and ended up winning the title the next year. And stay tuned for my next upload where I'm going to take a deep dive into what exactly happened with the Browns and why they blew everything up and how big of a mess they've actually turned themselves into and where everything went wrong because there's a lot to digest and I think that that'd be a really fun video to make. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching everyone and I will see you in the next upload and on Twitter.